Hey there. Today I want to talk about pass interference in the NFL that is now reviewable through the rule change that they made before the start of this regular season. The reason we're here is because of the NFC Championship game that happened last year between the Saints and the Rams. For those that don't remember, the Saints were driving down the field with the final moments of the game. They were in Rams uh, red zone territory. Drew Brees threw a pass to the right hand side and before his player had a chance to catch it, a Rams defensive back hit him before the ball arrived, which should have been flagged for a defensive pass interference and giving them the spot of the ball right where the flag was. Well, that didn't happen. The refs didn't see it, or they chose not to throw the flag, and it was a huge uproar during the game and after the game and into the offseason to the point that they have now made it reviewable for offensive and defensive pass interference. Now, they didn't change the rules for pass interference, all they did was make it to where you can review these plays through a coach's challenge or within the final two minutes of each half. Now I'm going to read to you the rules in the NFL handbook on what a pass interference is. So it states that contact by a player who is not playing the ball that restricts the opponent's opportunity to make the catch, playing through the back of an opponent in an attempt to make a play on the ball, grabbing an opponent's arm in such a manner that restricts his opportunity to catch a pass, extending an arm across the body of an opponent, thus restricting his ability to catch a pass and regardless of whether the player committing such act is playing the ball, cutting off the path of an opponent by making contact with them without playing the ball, hooking an opponent in an attempt to get the ball in such a manner that it causes the opponent's body to turn prior to the ball arriving, and initiating contact with an opponent by shoving or pushing off, thus creating separation. Those are the general terms for pass interference in the NFL. And for any fan who watches it, they understand what should and should not be called for a pass interference. Now, as you continue to watch the games, you can see before you could challenge pass interference on the offensive or defensive side of the ball and what, whether it was called or not, you could see receivers creating a little bit of separation in their routes by doing a small push off, not a blatant two-handed one or one fully extended arm because those are obvious and calm. But you will see the receivers more times than not have their hand on a defensive player, push off a little bit without fully extending their arm to create the separation that they need to catch the pass. So this is where the issue comes into play. Not with the ability to challenge these types of plays when they're not called, puts the refs and the coaches all in this murky unknown area. Because it's the first year of this, nobody knows what to call it, how, how it should be called. There's, there's no consistency in the calls. So for an offensive pass interference, if it's not something blatant, and as a defensive coach, you can see that the receiver's making a little bit of a push off, but it's not the full extension or two hands that something would normally be flagged, and you throw a challenge on that, Upon review, if they look at that and decide, well, during the game, before any of this, before this, these challenges could happen in a game, we wouldn't have called that. It wouldn't have been called, even though it states in the rule book that if any, any person trying to catch the ball makes contact by pushing or shoving the opponent to create separation, it should be a penalty. But rules are bent and not broken in the NFL, so you're able to do that within most respects. So now as a defensive coach, you want, or as a head coach and, the, and your team's on defense, if you want to challenge that, more times than not, you're going to lose. You're going to lose your challenge and you're going to lose a timeout because of it because there's no consistency with this call. On the defensive side, now you're able to challenge a non-call like what happened in that Saints and Rams game. And being able to challenge that when something as blatant as that is, that's a huge momentum shift. That flips the field position for you if you're on offense. It hurts if you're on defense, clearly. But the, the purpose of this rule is to try to make, make sure the correct call, calls are being made on the field. That's what it comes down to. That's why replay has become such a big part of not just football, but also in baseball and basketball that you see it as well, and hockey. So here is where the issue for me is coming into play. Including last night's game between the Giants and the Patriots, they, they talked about it. They flashed up a stat 
to where this year there have been 40 pass interference uh, penalties challenged and only seven of them have been overturned. So that means for that additional 33 penalties, they they stood, they left whatever the call was on the field, they left because there wasn't clear and convincing evidence. Now, that's a phrase that a lot of baseball fans have become become comfortable hearing, the clear and convincing evidence to overturn a call, because that's what you need to try to overturn what the umpires or the refs on the field have made. It's difficult when it's not a blatant call to try and change what the refs have saw in live action because that just shows you don't you don't trust them you don't believe in them and their ability to make the right call so more times than not in these situations if it's not blatant they're going to stick with what was called on the field now because it's still so early in this nfl season and it's the first year being able to challenge these pass interferences head coaches haven't put that together they still think all right i have a shot if i challenge this with something that could have been called as a pass interference if I challenge it, that's that's bonus for my team if it could put in my direction. But more times than not, they're going to stick with what was called on the field based on the statistics alone. It's safe to say that even when, to our own eyes, the plays could or should have been overturned from what the ruling on the field doesn't mean that they will based on a lack of convincing evidence. Now, I was actually speaking with uh, my girlfriend last night about this. If challenging of penalties continues if let's say throughout this year it's going to stay a part of the game if they find more success in the challenging of pass interferences both offensive and defensive they decide to want to expand on that well i think the most common play to try to expand on being able to challenge would be a roughing the passer if you're able to challenge if a roughing the passer is called on your defense and you can challenge he, he didn't hit him right you know after the ball was released. He hit him right as the ball was released. Or when he hit him, he tried his best to make sure he didn't land full force on top of the quarterback, which was, both now constitutes a roughing the passer. That's, that's huge as well. If that's something that you want to get into, then you're able to take away that additional yards that the offense could have gotten there, that additional 15 yards that you think should not have been called. But that's something that's getting ahead of where we are right now, We're still in the midst of this pass interference debacle and trying to find a good way to call it consistently during the game. And until we're able to do that and understand what is and is not pass interference when it's challenged and when it, you know, when it's called or isn't called, only then are we going to be able to move on with this review and see if we can expand it to different penalties you can challenge. And with that, you'll, you'd probably see an additional challenge given, but not just an additional challenge, maybe one more timeout. Because if you get it wrong, then you're still you losing a timeout. But if you're, let's just say, devil's advocate, everything with challenging and pass interference goes well. So now they want to branch off and make it to where you can challenge if a roughing the passer was or was not called, and you can challenge to try to get that penalty overturned or lack thereof overturned. Well, now you still only have those two challenges. If you're burning your challenges on penalties that could have been but weren't called or vice versa, and you're wrong, then you're out of them for the rest of the game. And you have to hope that the refs get the calls right whenever there's uh, a possible catch that wasn't called a catch or a touchdown that wasn't called a touchdown. Because if it was a scoring play and they said it was a score, they'll review it. But if it's something in the end zone that was a score but they called incomplete, and you're out of challenges, you can't review it, and you're stuck. So something they might look to experiment with is an additional challenge to give to coaches. But that's, I think we're far down the line away from, from that becoming a thing. So that's, those are my opinions on it. That's how I see the pass interference being called with these challenges now this year. I, I'm hoping there'll be more consistency with the call, but I feel it's going to like I referred before, it's going to be more like baseball where you need clear and convincing evidence. And even if you think you have clear and convincing evidence, it needs to be more blatant than that. Because if it isn't, they're going to stick with what the call was on the field. Until next time, I'm Kevin Householder.